This is James with First Updates Now. I'm here at the Rocket City Regional in Huntsville, Alabama. We will be focusing on Team 8044 Denim Venom from Denim Springs, Louisiana. They have a very beautiful roller that's gone through a metamorphosis this year. And we're going to focus on some of their very unique ways of doing handoffs and that metamorphosis itself. Today on First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. All right, starting us off, Caleb, you're going to be going over some of the mechanical design. So this is our rear intake, and it flips down like this to pick up any cube off of the floor. Um, so it's very fast picking up the cubes off the floor and hands it off straight here to our claw. This claw will flip up, and you can also use it to pick up uh, cones from the single substation and floor. Uh, it goes up with our two-stage vertical elevator with our three-stage horizontal elevator. All of that to score low, mid, high, wherever we want to. We used these poly bands here because the poly bands themselves are very good at gripping the cones. And we use these ranger bands on top to be very good at gripping the cubes so that we have that really good mix of gripping both of them. The angle of the claw is also very important because we can just grip the tips of the cones and we can grip the wide angle of the cubes instead of just having an actuated claw, which is what we originally have. Um, that didn't work as well at Magnolia, which is the whole thing. So you may notice our name, Monarch, and the name of the, the, name of the um, robot is very important because we said that at Magnolia, which was our first regional, we didn't do well. We actually ended up having to zip tie everything up and become a defense spot. So that was our Caterpillar stage. We had a week between then and there, which was our Bayou Regional. Between that week, we said we were in our um, Chrysalis stage. And then now that we're uh, done with all of those upgrades, we're a Monarch Butterfly. So you brought up the upgrades, but like what specifically did you all change to do it? Like you said that like you didn't that this that the gripper didn't work that well at Magnolia. So let's go over more specifically what did you have before and why is this now better? So originally, we have, for our claw, we had an actuated claw with still two rollers, but instead of just, instead of having these poly bands, it was just two different rollers, one in the front on the top and one in the front on the bottom. Um, and then that didn't work very well because it was very heavy and we had a lot of issues. Our motors couldn't pick it up. We didn't, we weren't able to really clamp and get the uh, right compression and everything we wanted on it. Um, another thing, our rear intake, instead of having this, we had a straight aluminum bar mounted off of this that would flip all the way down and all the way up, which is very slow, and we also didn't get the right compression ratios that we wanted. So between then, we completely redesigned this rear intake, so all of this that you see here wasn't on this robot. We also redesigned this whole claw, so this whole claw thing that you see here wasn't on the robot. Other than that, the only thing that we've changed between here and Bayou was we lengthened these bars here to give us a little bit more reach so that it would also go a little bit further back in the robot so we can miss a couple less cubes than what we did because we dropped the occasional cube. All right, really cool. It's always great to see teams evolving in their design, and not just settling for what they have. This is a very iterative game. And without the bag now, we're able to completely iterate between our events. All right, Kaylee, you wanted to go over some more of the stuff on the robot? Okay. Okay, so basically, we like to make sure that our human player knows exactly what's happening during the game, because it's really hard to communicate across the field. So between uh, by you and now we added these LEDs. So right now they're blinking blue. That means that it is connected to the driver's station. So that way our drivers know that they're actually connected. If it's not, it'll be rainbow. Also, if we enable it, so we're gonna do that now. Right now it's purple. That means that it's in cube mode. So if he runs the cube, if he runs intaking, he'll be able to intake cubes. If he changes it to cone mode, it'll be yellow and that way our, our human player knows when or when not to put a cube or a cone into the driver station. Actually, if we put a cone in it right now, if we can grab one of those real quick. Yeah. Can we take the cone? 
So if, yeah, you see that it flashes white. That we do to make sure that our drivers know that we have a game piece in. And basically we do that by looking at the voltage spikes on the motor. Originally we were going to use um, beam brake sensors and that was at Magnolia, but we decided that that wasn't going to work and we wanted to try something different. So we decided to look at the stalling in the motors and when the voltage spikes and that's how we tell when to flash them white. So you guys use that voltage spike in order to determine if it's in or whether or not, like, is there a different voltage spike depending on the cube or the cone is basically what I'm asking. Or is it just, if there's a voltage spike at all, just knows it's in, it'll flash white whether it's cube or cone. Um, yeah, so basically it blinks white whether it's a cube or a cone because that stalling just happens. There's like a area in between and we just use that one. And so... So after you score, does it stay continuing uh, blinking yellow, or when the actually the the torque on the motors is lessened, does it flash white again? Okay, so basically, um, it'll blink white for a certain period of time that we have set in the code, and then it'll turn back yellow. And he can change between yellow and purple with a button on his controller. All right, and Michael, you had some more stuff that you wanted to go over. Yeah, I just, I mean, this is more just pure code stuff, but um. So we realized this year uh, with the design of the robot, um, there's a lot of ways where it can break itself if um, we, you know, move it in the wrong ways. For example, if the arm is all the way back and we try to move the elevator up, it'll slam into this top bar. So obviously we don't want to do that um, or it'll break. So we decided to go for, um, last year we went like a states machine, but this year we tried to do a little something a little different. Uh, we're using a command-based robot. Uh, and so this case, uh, we decided to make two different types of uh, commands. We made simple commands and complex commands. The only difference between them is the simple commands directly... Uh, okay, well, in our subsystems, we directly control the motors. And in the simple commands, there's a bunch of um, logic-based uh, sequences we go through to ask, like, okay, well, if the arm is all the way down, uh, then do not let the vertical elevator go up because we don't want it to break it. So simple commands, no matter uh, what the robot's going through, uh, if they are run, will not break it. Um, and so our complex commands uses only the simple commands when they run the robot, and the complex commands are things that are actually uh, used for the buttons. Uh, and so, yeah, the complex commands, they use the simple commands, and if there's a state that is, like, if the arm is down and it needs the vertical elevator to go up, the simple commands, there's stuff in them to make sure that it'll put, pull this out before it goes up, and it doesn't break that way and um, is very nice. So, works really well. All right, so ba basically the, the whole idea of these commands is so that way the robot doesn't hurt itself. Not so, mu not so, not so much in order to make it actually do the iteration, but to make sure that if the human says it's good to go, the robot can know that it's actually not. Okay. All right. So you guys also do very have a very unique uh, elevator system. I'd love to actually just show it off real quick. And are you guys able to do a quick handoff so we can actually see the handoff from yeah. the intake? Uh, I don't think I'm going to play this one. We're going to play this too fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the no, Caleb, I'm faster. Give it, give it, give it. <laughs> this man has zero lungs. Give me the raisin. Give me the raisin. <laughs> all right, thank you all so much. Special thanks to Caleb, Kaylee, and Michael for the great interview. I hope to see you guys do very well today, and I hope you guys qualify for championships in two weeks. This is James signing off with First Updates Now and Team 8044 Denim Venom. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. 
Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and first updates now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.